Okay, we're going to continue uh, with the punch. Rivers crisis, cop killed as youths dislodge pro wiki local government chairman. Picture here, FG6 UNESCO recognition for Oju Deoba Festival. <clears throat> Excuse me. Abducted for an EMD3, Lebanese unite with their families. Saraki Abdul Razak, trade words over Ilori Doba attendance. <clears throat> Cholera, WHO, UNICEF, hold emergency meeting, experts warn corpus. Kano Emirates Senate denies alleged emergency rule, NBA probes lawyers. Revenue generating agencies OFG over 3 trillion naira, says FAC. And FG offers 17 new oil blocks for bidding. Ah. <laughs> okay, so I have the Kano story. Yes, go ahead. Mm. Um, the former governor, Rabiu Kokwansu, had alleged that um, the presidency wanted, or the federal government wanted to use power to declare state of, of emergency in Kano state and take over the state because of the uh, Emirate issue. And then he went on saying that I've, I know some very powerful politicians in Kano. Um, whenever, um, they are I want to tell the federal government, now, including my friend, President Bola Tinobu, that I should be mindful of Kano politics. It will destroy his presidency. They never agree on any issue and all of that. And so because he had roped the National Assembly into it, who have the power to... Um, approve a, a state of emergency, the Senate was forced to uh, uh, respond to him. Um, they said the National Assembly is in recess and no president can wake up and declare a state of emergency in any state. There's no truth to this. It is merely a rumor. And the federal government cannot declare a state of emergency in any state without the involvement of the National Assembly. And the National Assembly have no such plans. They've been on recess. That's um, the Senator Adara Mola, I think. Adara I think that Modu. exact story yesterday. Yeah, yesterday. Mm. Oh, okay, great. And so he was responding to them. Also, the NBA has said that they have received about eight memos from the lawyers involved in the cases. Because you know the NBA president has said at the time mm. that they will be uh, probed. So the publicity secretary to the uh, Nigerian Bar Association, Akore Ak Delawa, said that um, they have received eight memos and that they will be looking into the conduct of the lawyers who had the conflicting uh, court orders that, you know, scattered the Kano case. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, story. Yes, I've got the cholera story. As we know, we have an outbreak and um, it's, you know, in about 30 states in our country right now. Um, they said yesterday the World Health Organization and UNICEF, you know, and um, IOM Nigeria, they all had an emergency, you know, meeting yesterday discussing um, the cholera. And um, something that was of particular interest is the fact that uh, NYC camps will be opening up again and, uh, you know, stakeholders are concerned, you know, the state of some of our camps. Uh, many of us who have been to camps here, we know that um, not many camps are, you know, properly, you know, organized. Um, pipe bomb water is an issue, open defecation, you know, this sort of thing. So the conversations that, they were, that you know, were had was to make sure that things are put in place to prevent it instead of treating. So make sure that there's proper hygiene and um, practices going on, but make sure that water is running through the camps, um, proper toilets, you know, and food is properly cooked. Um, and the main narrative of this particular report is just telling us to be, um, to take the hygienic, hygiene practices very importantly, as it's cheaper than you know trying to treat the cholera itself so for all of us so whether it's nyc camps or schools or at home wash your hands always make sure that you cook your food properly please open defecation we can't continue to do that the government also make sure you put systems in place to prevent people from doing that and also provide proper places that people can you know use for for that and yes <coughs> let's just keep clean all right so the rescued managing director of Fuani Nigeria, um, the, if you know Fuani Nigeria, they're the sole distributors of LG, Hisense, and other products in Nigeria. So um, the MD and three others were released or were rescued, according to Hudeng. The police public relations officer in Lagos, SP Benjamin Hudeng, has said that they confirmed that they were rescued, um, they said they were rescued in Urugbo Ido through a coordinated effort by the Marine Police and the Nigerian Navy that followed their successful extraction. <clears throat> they were brought to shore and subsequently taken home by a tactical police team to their residence in Banana Island. So um, although they had the kidnappers or had um, requested for a ransom of $1.5 million, we don't know if the uh, ransom was paid, but at least the, the police is saying that they were rescued. So 
I'm mm. happy that, that they're home because that's the most important thing. Yeah. For us. Any other story in punch? Yes, there is the story of um, the fact that revenue generating agencies are actually <coughs> owning the federal government over 3 trillion naira. The figure came out as at April 2024, was revealed during the Federal Account Allocation Committee meeting, FAC. And correspondents of Punch got the details of the meet, minutes of the meeting to reveal that these unnamed agencies have, um, they need to, they need, the, the word is reconcile unremitted earnings. And this unremitted earnings can go as high as three trillion. However, there's a post-mortem subcommittee and representing the committee chairman, um, Kabiru Mashai, in the meeting said the outstanding amounts are being reconciled with the agency monthly and they are holding monthly reconciliation meeting and funds are being released back into the FAC, um, federal government account um, representing the, ch the chairman of all commission finance commissioners uh, who is represented by the um, Ekiti state commissioner Akitude Oyebo they commended that the postmortem subcommittees meetings have been yielding results because we all know that the more money agencies um, release to the federal government account the more money will be shared amongst all the, um, the federal, the states, and the local government areas. So they are hoping that more of these monies will get released. And I, I thought they have this unified accounting system that ensures every revenue that comes to the country goes into the, um, what's that account? One, um, there's well, a word they use for? Federal. TS. No, no, no. T, uh, T, yeah, T, uh, single treasury. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah. T, TSA. TSA. <laughs> Vanguard. Canada is thick. I thought it was because of week. You know, we came made punch think because yes. of the list of those but, who are owing money in FCT. Now, so he wrote their Vanguard, names out. He wrote their names out. <laughs> hey, FCT, not play Mr. with it. Yeah. Punch is very thick. All the names of all those who are owing Every lots. All the lots that are not owing. Play. It's not playing. <laughs> but Vanguard is thick because they're saying happy birthday to the governor of uh, the Delta State. Or, which is, let us just move on. Okay. <laughs> Vanguard, Nigeria is not alone in poverty. Atiku LPA, Taku Tinumbu. Residents, Dr. Beg for more physicians at General Hospital in Loring. Mayhem in Rivers as we care for bar field spills to local government headquarters. Hairs holding celebrate impact convened annual doc, um, director submit. Unibend graduate beaten, ripped to death in Edo. Mm. How Lagos police rescued, kidnapped Fuani, MD, and four others. Cholera, some Lagos schools may not resume from break, says commissioner. Okay, so the association of resident doctors um, at the General Hospital in Lorry paid a visit to the governor of Kwara State. And they went to, of course, congratulate him and commend him for converting the Kwara State Hospital to a teaching hospital. Um, and with the teaching hospital bill and also upgrading the general hospital in Lorin to a teaching hospital. But then they are asking that you should need, they need more medical personnel because the services cannot be optimal if they don't have more hands, that they are short of hands. Basically, that's what they were saying to the governor. But then they congratulated him for um, the malaria control and passage of the teaching hospital bill. So there was a really horrible story in Benin City. A female student at Uniben and inspired as Ade Kolore Idowu Glory has been reportedly ripped to death. Oh my God. Glory 22, a recent graduate of the university, was said wow. to have been beaten and ripped to death um, at Iweya Community in Benin City on June 13th. Um, an ex post a user was identified as Glory's brother, said unknown men attacked her while she was on her way back home oh, from no. school. She had graduated in April this year, was said to have been processing her clearance when she was killed. Hmm. Her body was reportedly left to left close to her house. Such a it's horrible, just horrible story. I, just I hope, hope they are able to find it. I think I saw a story about some arrest I hope it's the same one. I hope it's the same one. Any the other story? Oils, I do have a story. The Fire. Nigerian, some oil. Some people have become, Go ahead. Some people are becoming, they're going to, the, the Nigerian Upstream Petroleum Regulatory Commission, they've added 17 new oil blocks. These are offshore. And into the 2024 oil block bid. Which I'm this, bidding for. <laughs> so in April, they revealed 12, and now they've added 17 more. That's they good. released they, they, they release the details of how people can bid for this. He explained that the reopening was to allow more investors to take advantage of the incentives that have been provided by the president and um, the commission committee on, there will be more value, we'll get more money, oil and gas reserves will be maximized. I also hope that, he said, in addition, there'll be more um, data acquired in respect to the, especially the um, deep offshore blocks. I remember that we've gotten permission for more modular refineries 
and the investors had to pull out based on some things that we did not put together yeah. adequately mm -hmm. on our side. Still. So this is also another opportunity for us to get investors. Let's ensure that everything on our own end of the story is well done. And right. we also investigate that people that have capacity get the oil block, not those that have connection getting yeah. the oil block. We have to run, yeah. but I know there's a palm oil Yes, I do. Yeah. So the National Palm um, Produce Association of Nigeria, NIPAM, has said that Nigeria spends $600 million on palm oil importation yes. every year. <clears throat> uh, we have the national president. He describes it as unhealthy for national development. He said that um, if this sort of money is saved and injected into the economy, you know, uh, into the palm oil subsector, we would see, you know, the benefits of that. He says that, uh, as we all know, the same story of how we used to be the biggest palm um, it, it, Producer. Producers, but uh, Indonesia has taken over in the 60s. Now we rank fifth, and that even at the rate we're going, very soon a much smaller country that is investing in that subsector will overtake us. I think what we produce annually is about 1.4 million metric tons, while Indonesia does 19 million metric tons. And the government is still taxing. So we're still the people importing uh, machinery, because yeah. I know people that are investing in this place, and the machinery imported to process They're the power is still being heavily taxed as, as import. So we need to create incentives so that businesses will take up yeah. that area. That is all we can take on Front Page Review this morning. There's going to short break when we come back from what's our hot topic of today. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back.